and welcome to another IGTV episode. I am Leah Courtney, a homeschool mom of four and blogger at AsWeWalkAlongTheRoad.com. And this is the newest episode in the Homeschooling Your First Year and Beyond series. So this series is especially devoted to new homeschool moms or newer homeschool moms who are just getting started on your homeschool journey. And my hope is that it will bring you some encouragement and practical advice. So today's episode is going to be about some tips for homeschooling when you have little people in the house. And I'm not going to tell you that this is like all sunshine and roses and just do these tips and it'll all be good and everybody will be happy. That's not true. I'm going to tell you the two hardest years for our homeschooling were the year that my fourth was born, because that year I had an infant that I carried in a sling and nursed all day. She was born in August, so we started school in September, and she was tiny. And then I had a toddler who was 15 months older, and she was not happy unless she was let free to run and create havoc in the schoolroom. If we tried to shut her out in any way, if I tried to put her in a pack and play, she was not having it and she would scream and it would make school very difficult. My second hardest year was when she was three and my baby now was two. The three-year-old was very mischievous and she would take the two-year-old along with her. So if they were not directly in the room where I was doing stuff with my other two kids, I constantly was worrying about what they were up to because it probably wasn't good. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that this is just a season that you are in and you will get through it and it will get easier as you go along. But there's nothing that I can tell you that's gonna wave a magic wand and make it extremely easy to homeschool older kids while you have babies and toddlers. I am gonna give you some tips that will hopefully make it easier for you. Now, I know that some people have much larger families than four. And this first tip that I'm going to give you, I didn't use in my family because I only have four and the spread between the oldest and the youngest is six years. So this was not ever really a big deal for us or a possibility that we could use. But some of my friends who have much larger families, they deal with this by pairing an older kid with a younger kid during the homeschool day and rotating out who the older kid is based on what they're doing with the other group of kids. So let's say you have a 12 year old and a 10 year old and an eight year old all doing school, but then you also have maybe like a five year old, three year old, one year old. Then the way that I've seen some bigger families do it is they'll work with the group of older kids minus one while that one is playing with the younger kids and then they'll rotate who goes to play with the younger kids. So I've seen that work well in large families. It didn't work for us because like I say I only had four and the spread was from six to zero and so it, it just wasn't really a feasible thing for us but that can work well. The Next tip that I'm going to tell you will work for any ages, however many kids you're homeschooling, and this is a biggie. And it's not only true for this particular instance, it's true when you consider a lot of the issues, I'm doing air quotes that you can't see, but issues that come up in homeschooling, a lot of it is because we need to change our mindset about what learning really is. And if you've been in a traditional school or if you've had your kids in a traditional school, you've got to move away from the idea that your home learning needs to look like school because it really doesn't. So I would encourage you to really just change your mindset about what homeschooling is and understand that it doesn't have to be kids sitting quietly at a desk working in a workbook or listening to you talk throughout the day to be learning. You can have the whole family involved in hands-on projects. 
if you're doing that, then you can give the little ones something that they can occupy their hands with if they're toddlers. And that way you're sort of, you have a different mindset about what to expect. And learning can be messy. It can be fit into any situation. Here's an example of something that I used to do when I had a toddler. I would sit the kids at the kitchen table and I would put the toddler in the high chair with something really messy and edible, like yogurt, pudding, something like that. And I can sort of feel some of you cringing already, but it worked, y'all. She would sit and happily make a mess while I did stuff with the other kids at the table. Another thing that I did and had to change my mindset but I was talking in a group. Um, I was a member of a breastfeeding group, La Leche League, when my little ones were really little. And the leader of this group had also homeschooled, and I was talking about the fact that I just couldn't sit down with my older kids because the younger ones needed to be occupied. And she said, well, do your little ones like to take a bath? At the time, I had one who was about six, seven months old, and then I had a toddler, two to three year old, um, two, one to two year old, sorry, one to two year old. And I was like, yeah, they love to take a bath. And she said, well, put them in the tub in their little bath rings, sit in the bathroom floor and read or do school with the older kids. And I was like, you know, that would work because they love to play in the tub. So I did that, set them in their little bath rings. I sat there right beside the tub so I could watch them. And my older kids, it actually worked in our bathroom. We didn't have room to all sit in the floor. But where the door was, I could sit in the floor next to the tub and the older kids could sit right outside the door in the hallway and we could all do some schoolwork. So I would read aloud their reading, sitting in the floor right outside the bathroom. But it was a matter of changing my mindset about things like that and understanding that learning could happen other places, not sitting in a desk, working in a workbook. So that was a big thing for me, is to change that mindset about what learning really is and understand that your kids can be learning in little instances like sitting outside the bathroom door doing reading or sitting at the table while one child is extremely messy and making a huge mess and having fun. So change your mindset. And then the other big tip that I would give you is take advantage of any opportunity that you have to focus, do more focused work with your big kids. And this was a matter of like seeing those spaces during the day that I might have opportunities. Nap time was a big one. Now I will tell you that my kids had nap time, quiet time, all the way up until they were middle school, high school, they were not napping, of course, but they were quiet because I would lay down and nap or have some alone time. But when we had that toddler baby age, I could take my older kids and during the first part of the quiet rest time, we could do some more focused school. Then they could go have quiet time as well because the toddler and baby were laying down from about two hours and so if we worked the first 45 minutes or so then I and the older kids got some rest time still but we had that little bit of focus time without the little ones in the mix. The last tip that I would give you and this one will be a quick one but the last tip that I'm going to give you is to put some things in your school area that the baby and toddler don't play with anywhere else because if you have some fun toys like that in the schoolroom then they're able to play with those things and occupy themselves while the big kids are learning. I used things like blocks, um, puzzles as they got bigger, the big floor puzzles were fun. The Melissa and Doug magnetic figures or I also used felt figures, things like that that would be relatively quiet but that would be something fun and new. Busy bags are a big thing now and if you search busy bags on Pinterest, you can find tons of ideas for busy bags that have things for babies or toddlers to do that can occupy them, keep them quiet, and give you a little bit more time to focus on the big kids. 
so those are the tips that I want to give you today for homeschooling your big kids when you have little ones in the mix. I also encourage you, if you haven't seen the other episodes in the series, scroll down in my profile and find those and make sure you catch up on those as well. And I will be back next Tuesday with another episode in this series. Mm -hmm.